What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reefing, coming back at you with another video and today my tank has given me a Christmas surprise. I'm filming this Christmas morning as the little guy got up early, so I have daddy duty while mom and big brother sleep in, but there is a little present for me in regards to my tank. And by the title of this video you already know it's Old Tank Syndrome, mm. but it's only a little bit older than two years old. How do I have old tank syndrome already? Dad, it's because you are lazy and you haven't been keeping up with your maintenance because me and my brother are keeping you busy and your job has been very stressful, so you haven't had the time to take care of the tank like you are supposed to. Okay, smart Alec, let me get to the video and then we will get back to you looking super cute in your Christmas outfit. It's about time. All right, so as you know, I keep a log of everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna synthesize all this information so that way we can kind of figure out where it all went wrong and where it went off the rails. Don't mind me, Dad. I'll just be hanging out here while you do your video. Okay, guys, if you don't have a log already for your reef tank, do it and mark down everything that you see and do because this has really helped me out. So let me show you what I got. I have narrowed it down to an imbalance between nitrate and phosphate. So my levels were great around this time. I mean, 2.3, I want single digit nitrates and you know, 0 0.09 or less phosphates. And that's pretty awesome. But then I started noticing on 9.4 some dinos and cyano, which I'm seeing in my tank now. And then a month later, my blasto looks bad. So then I test a little bit later on 1010 and I noticed, oh my, my phosphates have jumped through the roof. So I was like, you know what, let's do a deep clean of the sump, do a water change, clean out all the detritus in the sump, that's probably where it's coming from. And you know, I did that big water change, 31 gallons, but then I noticed my salinity kind of dipped when I did that water change. So I must have not mixed one of the salt batches up all the way, um, which kind of happens sometimes. You kind of rush and you think it's good, but it's not. So I recalibrated my probe and realized, oh, it's at 34.1 parts per thousand instead of 35. So, you know, I added it and corrected it. Um, I was like, you know what, let's just add some GFO. Then a couple days later, I'm like, oh my God, my phosphates are still climbing. I cannot believe this. And then I'm like, okay, my hammer's looking bad. So then on 11.29, you know, nitrates are where they need to be. Phosphates are still high. So I'm like, all right, let's add some phosphate and let's do a deep clean of the sand bed. Holy cow, after I did a deep clean of the sand bed, my phosphate shot up to 0 0.32. So I'm like, okay, this, this has to be coming from my, uh, because I did the deep clean, I did a big water change with it. I was like, well, it's gotta be coming from the um, pre-mixed, you know, salt water that I'm making. Something's gotta be bad with my source water, 0 0.02. So, and that leads us to today where I'm at 0 0.29 in the tank with a 0 0.02 in my freshly mixed salt water. Okay, it's early in the morning, so the lights aren't on, but you can kind of see some cyano over here. I got some cyano down there by the rocks. A little bit of cyano back there. Uh, where'd the cyano go? Eh, there's more cyano kind of build up everywhere. But I'm thinking a lot of this is coming from, oh, there's the cyano right there. I think a lot of this is coming from the phosphate and nitrate levels being all out of whack. It is just completely messed up. So look, there's some cyano on that dead coral skeleton too. So I was listening to Rip and Reef Bum because I love him and he has some great guests on. And this guy named Claude Schumacher, Schumacher, I hope I didn't mess up his name, from Fauna Marin came on and was really talking about the system as a whole. And one of the things he talked about was phosphate. Now he was talking about how, you know, early on some people have to dose phosphate in their system and he really discouraged it because he said, you know, whatever you put into the system will eventually have to come back out of the system. So when I was getting really, really low phosphate readings, I was like, you know what? Um, maybe I just need to um, cut back on their fugium time and everything like that. And maybe this will kind of fix itself on its own. So I was like, okay, well, I don't really need to have a refugium or do as many water changes because my nutrients are super low. However, what I am hypothesizing is that a lot of the nutrients are getting bound up in the sand, which is why you have cyano outbreaks on the sand bed 
and how I get a little bit of green film in the corners. A little bit of green film, a little bit of cyano back there. You can kind of see that in the low flow areas. So here's my plan. We're going to do this experiment. So this is my refugium where I put all my media and crap like that. And you can kind of see it's mm, pretty janky. And my turnover in here is next to nothing. So that bag that's holding the Kato, I put a, a bag of Kato in here because I don't want it going over the overflow and getting all nasty and gummed up over in the weir. Because whenever I kick the pumps off, it, the water level raises and then it kind of goes onto the overflow section and the baffles and then it just doesn't work and there's not a lot of turnover here. When I put a pump in here, it doesn't really work out. So I thought, let's build something. So I'm gonna build something for this refugium because I've already turned the lights up a little bit longer, but the refugium is just not pulling much out. I'm not getting good Kato growth, despite having the phosphate and nitrate levels that would, you know, allow me to have great Kato growth. So I'm guessing it's the flow in here and not necessarily the light. Also, do you see what is down there in that black thing? Yes, that is a Brightwell brick. I'm also thinking that because I've had this Brightwell brick for years, like, oh, the first brick broke in 2016 or 17. So this one's a 2018 or 19 brick. So this is like four years old at least. I'm gonna take the brick off, clean it off, just the top layer, put it in some freshly mixed salt water at 0 0.02 phosphate. I wanna see if anything leaches out of it because I think I'm at the point where this brick might be starting to leach out some stuff. Now I know what you're thinking. Probably some of these rocks are leaching out phosphate too. I would say no, just because, I mean, you guys saw my cure on these things. I did a month in bleach. I did a month in freshly mixed, or actually fresh water, a month in fresh water, a month in RDI water, and another month in um, salt water from the tank and then I just let them sit. So these things are definitely cured and I don't think I have anything to worry about as far as leaching from the rocks. The sand on the other hand, well, that's a different story. Well, we'll see if my uh, hypothesis is correct about those Brightwell bricks holding on to some phosphates. All right, so you can see overall the corals aren't looking too bad. Got that cyano patch there, there, and there and a little bit kind of hidden in the corners, but the main problem is these hammers are all closed up. So I know when the hammers are closed up and this blaster right there is looking a little sketchy. I know something's up with my parameters, so that's why I'm going and doing this deep dive. Oh yeah, there's also Sano back there. All right, this bright red brick, completely disgusting. And you got some vermitids on it as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up a little bit, then I'm gonna soak it in some freshly mixed salt water and see if any of this phosphate leaches out that I think might be happening. Well guys, I was not expecting this. 0 0.26, holy cow. I let the Brightwell brick sit in there for 40 hours with a circulation pump, just kicking it around. Just tested the water and got 0 0.26. Holy crap, that Brightwell brick is just leaching phosphate oh my god and remember that freshly mixed salt water that i just put in with the bright red brick was 0 0.02 oh that's a quarter of a part per million phosphate going into the tank because of the bright red brick that is insane i know that brick is only i don't know 2017 to now so i mean it could just have just absorbed everything we have to look up on how to clean this Brightwell brick or I just need to pitch it. I mean, oh my God. So I just did a huge water change, everything like that. We'll test the water in a little bit and see what it is. Cause I like to test around the same time every day. So around, you know, three, four, five, six PM. And then we'll get back to this. All right. So I just got off the phone with Brightwell. It has now been about, I don't know, 50 something hours later. It's early in the morning on dad duty. So talk to Brightwell, they were telling me that uh, with the Brightwell brick, they said, you know, like there's nothing that's phosphate that's leaching out. It's probably all the organics that are kind of like trapped in the brick and pretty much said, you know, don't trust Hannah. Hannah's not very accurate. But 
said it wasn't the brick, it was just the organics and that I should use Microbacter Clean. Said I didn't have that, so they're gonna send me out some Microbacter Clean to kind of clean up all the mess in the tank. Cause you can kind of see the algae, some cyano. He said the clean should help with it, even though I've been kind of doing my maintenance and cleaning the sand bed up, but the clean will help. As far as the brick, he said, you know, you've had it set in salt water. It's probably leaching out all the stuff in the salt water. I asked him, should I put it in some fresh water? He said, well, because it's made of calcium, there's some calcium carbonate in there, it will break down, the brick will break down in fresh water. But if I did a 12 hour to 24 hour max rinse of it, whatever's left in the brick, which you can kind of see there's kind of gunk on there still, it should kind of expel into the, you know, fresh RODI water. And then he did say that all the bacteria is gonna be dead, but why do I care? I got a two year old tank that's got tons of bacteria in it and Microbacter 7. I don't care if I kill the bacteria in it because I got bacteria to spare. Last thing he said was to use phosphate absorbing media, which I already got GFO and phosphine in there just to pull out the phosphates. Other than that, let's see if I can get this tank turned around and looking better. So I will wait a little bit longer and hopefully if I get this microbacter clean in, I can kind of see if it's gonna work and if there's gonna be any results that I can, you know, show. This video is like definitely going sideways and not going as I expected, but that's kind of life right now. When you think you got something, it always throws a curveball at you. All right, so I came up with this crazy idea on how to, you know, manage all these excess phosphates. Now that I removed one of the sources of phosphate, I have my phosphate and GFO in the sump right now. Don't worry about all this, this is already out of water. But I'm going to make a DIY um, little Kato reactor. So I got this at Pop Shelf for like three bucks because you know I got tons of money to spend. And I figured this would probably be good. My plan is to kind of put a little pump at the bottom and have it kind of circulate the water through up and out of it and keep all the Kato in this bucket. And it'll sit directly under that light and hopefully it'll keep any of the light from spilling out. Most of it should stay in the bucket and you know, keep it nice and tidy and then the water will kind of flow out that so that's going to be a topic for another video when i make a diy kato reactor and hopefully it works out pretty well and you guys get to see my build process on that but right now i have no idea how to wrap up this video or to summarize it because i still have to wait for the uh, microbacter clean from brightwell that they're going to send me and i got to do a whole bunch of stuff to the brick well really just you know like keep soaking in the salt water and then soak it in fresh water for like 12 hours and then it should be fine to go back in the sump it's an accumulation of detritus in the brick which is causing the phosphate which is what brightwell says so they said you know kind of clean it but it's hard to clean those things so in order not to drag out this video for another couple days because i've already been on this for like two weeks trying to figure out what the heck has been going on and i need to do another video for the diy um, algae reactor i kind of need to wrap this thing up so what is causing all the phosphates in the tank? Why is there cyano? Why is everything going on? Is it old tank syndrome? Or is it Lars lazy blank reefer syndrome? Well, I would probably say it's a combination of me not really knowing that I should clean out the Brightwell brick and all the phosphate that I put into the tank with all the feedings is finally slowly coming out because I haven't been as diligent with cleaning my sand bed as I should. So yeah, I probably need to clean my sand bed more. I've been doing deep cleans of the sump, but I missed a major source of where all this phosphate's coming from with the brick. So if I were to give any of you guys advice, I would say make sure that you clean your Brightwell bricks any of those ceramic media, I've done it before with the bio balls, it's super easy. But with that brick, I never even did it. And I think that's turned into a, a phosphate battery. And don't just kind of skim your sand bed, really get in and deep clean that sand bed. Because you can kind of see where there's little pockets, where detritus is probably at. That's where all the cyano and algae start growing. All right guys, so if you like what you see here and you wanna see more, click the subscribe button. Don't forget to comment below and let me know how you're liking the videos. And hopefully I helped you guys out if you feel like you have old tank syndrome. It could just be you're lazy and need to do some deep cleaning maintenance.
And don't forget to stick around for the next video. When it's going to come out, I don't know, but it should be in the next couple weeks where I'm going to make a little Kato reactor with this. So guys, I will see you later.